Hey, so today's video is gonna be my top 10 designer perfumes in my collection. I was tagged by um, hashtag DMV Fragcom uh, YouTuber, fragrance reviewer, Deborah Day. Um, thank you, Deborah. Please check out her channel if you have not. Um, she keeps me up to date with some cool finds um, that's not stretching my comfort zone too far, but just enough to ease me um, into something different. So I love that about her channel and what she does. So yeah, check her out and I'll link her below. So to get started, let's see what I have first. Um, this is my little tiny dabber of Armani C Fiori. Um, besides the bottle being ultra cute, um, because now, after getting this little tiny one, I really want the big one. But this one is a very pretty vanilla rose scent um, with some white musk. There's a little neroli in it to keep it bright. Um, this is just a beautiful, innocent um, rose with some presents. It's not gonna go powdery on you, but that vanilla does keep it right up my vanilla alley. So um, what I tell myself is with these travel or smaller sizes, if I get through this, then I deserve a bigger bottle. So we'll see if I make it. Number two is going to be this baby. Um, this is Carolina Herrera, good girl. This is the Legere version. I do have um, the original version, but since it's spring, I'm going to share this one. This one is a beautiful jasmine-based fragrance. You do get tuberose, tonka, and sandalwood in it that keeps it mellow. Um, you just don't have the deeper um, coffee and there's something else that's in the original. You don't have the coffee in it that keeps it darker. But this one is one that you can wear out. Again, there's something sensual and almost um, kind of the feel that you get when you put on a body oil about this that I do like. But it, again, with the um, jasmine and some ylang ylang stays pretty bright. So I love this one. Number three. Keep some of these in boxes but number three is this little baby is Prada Candy I did go through a full bottle of this um, and I repurchased it in this size because again or if as I've said in other videos I did not want huge bottles taking up room collecting dust that I don't get to um, wear but this one is a classic that will stay in my collection more than likely for a long time. This is a vanilla scent with the caramel and the benzoin that just gives you this powdery, musky scent that I'm just, it's, it's just beautiful. It's sexy, it's fun, it's charismatic. I love this stuff. Um, so yeah, if I go through this one, I will rebuy it. But I do also have to have um, Prada Candy uh, Midnight. <sighs> that that one is that one is a beast too. Um, the next one is the this one Hugo Boss Private the Scent Private Accord for her. Let me get it right because there's quite a few of these. Um, Hugo Boss fragrances, but this one is Hugo Boss, the scent, private accord for her. Now this one, oh boy, this one, I don't know what I expected with this. I got this off of the recommendation of Julia Graff, who is a super huge and popular beauty guru that I've been watching for years. Um, she would talk about fragrance here and there as most of the beauty um, community did because fragrance is a part of beauty, but she separated her beauty and her fragrance channel and now she has the fragrance channel and I'm super excited because I feel like I hang on to every recommendation she gives, which I need to stop that. However, 
I, I don't know. I, I just I just love when she gives a good recommendation. So this one, this one is a sweet bomb. You do get the orange and cacao that they talk about right off the top. So that citrusy, sweet, chocolatey smell, you get it. And then it mellows into this just burnt sugar. It's intoxicating. It is a great date night scent. And that's what Julia said. And, um, you know, keep these in my arsenal. But it is, it's just one of those smells that's like so deep. It's almost like burnt sugar. Sort of like what I remember um, pink sugar being just that kind of so sugary, so sweet, deep and burnt. But this has the cacao in it and it has coffee. So that, that takes it there. But it's good. I like it. Um, I can't say what the longevity is. You know, a lot of these I've actually acquired. Um, with the exception of some of these. But I've acquired during quarantine. So I don't get to really wear it out. Um, I think it's average. And it doesn't hurt to throw it in your purse and touch up. But it is a, it is a nice little scent that make you taste or smell edible. <laughs> The next one is, I have, um, this one is my light blue intense. I got a travel size version. I recently just started liking light blue. Can you believe it? It's one of those scents that I felt like when it came out, it was abused. And it was abused by my sister. Ever, you could tell wherever she was or wherever she had been because you would smell light blue everywhere. And it just really turned me off. I'm, I can't really say that I did, didn't think it smelled great. It was just too much and it's overwhelming when you smell somebody everywhere and they're not even there. So um, I've come around, got a little older, my nose is different. Um, and this is just everything you want in a grown and sexy summer scent. It's bright. Um, it makes you, it gives you that feeling of the Mediterranean. So you have the lemon and the apple in it. And then it just goes from there to jasmine, amber, and musk. I mean, it stays light, but you're grown. You're grown with your um, Dior shades on or your Dolce & Gabbana heels or the Dolce & Gabbana have heels. I don't know if it's on. I buy the perfume. I don't buy the, <laughs> the designer stuff. Just buy the perfume. So yeah, if this one doesn't take me through the full summer, we'll be definitely getting a full size bottle. The next one I have is this one, Valentina Born in Roma. You guys. This is a beautiful powdery vanilla and jasmine fragrance. Um, it came out in 2019 and it's considered a floriental. There's jasmine, vanilla bourbon, pink pepper, and a woody base. Like this is everything. This is sweet. This is nice. This is, it has presence. It can go a little beast mode on you if you overspray. But this one, um, I think because it had that kind of powdery benzoin kind of feel to it, I wasn't quite sure at first. But, yo, this is love. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I feel it. I'm feeling it. Like it's great for daytime through work maybe a little after work. Um, because of that powderiness, I don't really say it's like date night or evening. Of course it can be worn in the evening because it's so beast, it's so beasty. But um, for, first of all, anything with bourbon vanilla and it gets to my vote, okay? Let's start there. <laughs> but this Valentina Donna Born in Roma, I actually love the bottle so much. So I hope, I hope I get through this and I can get me a bottle because that little studded glass bottle with the matte black cap is the business. The next one I pulled out and I don't know why. 
is Marc Jacobs Daisy Dream. I think everybody has or had some Marc Jacobs in their collections. Um, this one is just light and innocent. Um, it's an everyday easy wear. Some blackberry, you get that burst of juicy pear. Some wisteria, jasmine, and coconut water. I mean, it's light, little flowery. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I liked it as an everyday easy, grab, easy to grab fragrance, but what I really should have pulled out was my Marc Jacobs Daisy Oh So Sweet. That was my latest. Actually, I like Marc Jacobs. Um, the one that came out before that. Marc Jacobs Daisy. Anyway. The Oh So Sweet just holds a special place in my heart because I was like, okay, I'm going to a wedding and I want something that symbolizes sappy love and what better than a sappy, sappy, sugary, sweet perfume. And so um, at first it was like, is it a little too sweet? Um, the sillage that it gives off is delectable, but when you're wearing it, sometimes it can be a little too much. Um, but now when I smell it, it, it definitely has that amazing memory attached to it. I wore it to my dad's wedding in January. He just got remarried. Um, so that's the one that I should have pulled out. But I pulled out this one. I don't get the coconut water, but of course coconut water is light. It's not coconut cream or anything. Um, you could take it or leave it, honestly. Um... Number nine, Jimmy Choo Fever. You know, I really put this in the same category with my Val Valentino Donna Bonaroma because it does give you that kind of powderiness. Um, let's see what it has in it. It's a, it has black plum, lychee grapefruit. It's that heliotrope and benzoin with sandalwood and tonka bean like so you get those fruits um they're not bright citrusy fruits but again they're those those um darker more sweet fruits that mellow out the sweetness but that sandalwood and tonka bean the heliotrope benzoin with all that kind of powder slight vanilla kind of scent i mean i love it and dare i say i like it better than the original um but yes these two are very much in the same category. I would, if I had to choose between the two, I don't know which one I would pick. They're not dupes, but they're in that same, they give you that same vibe. And last but not least, I have a little baby um, black opium neon. Number one, no, there's three things about this that I just had to get it. One, it's pink. Two, they said passion fruit. And then three, coffee. So I love coffee. Um, trying to get away from it a little bit. Need to give myself a rest. But I love coffee. I love passion fruit. So in this, I don't, oh, excuse me. I don't know if I really get passion, passion fruit. I do get a, a stronger sweetness than the regular black opium. I have the regular black opium, which is a more balanced white floral um, and coffee. But this one is, the coffee has kind of drifted off a bit and it's definitely more sweet. I know people say there are longevity problems. I don't know, I'm just a fan. I'm definitely a fan of this. Um, I was able to go to the YSL Museum last year in Morocco and it made such an impression on me. Like you would go into different rooms and it would have different smells. And at the time I wasn't, or even now, I don't think I'm as well versed in YSL perfumes, but it just made me feel like, wait till I get back home and put my nose on some YSL perfumes. So this is one that I, I think I owned before even going, but it made me pay more attention to it. So this one will have a special place in my collection and 
those are my 10 designer fragrances that I am loving in my collection right now. Um, again, I have a newer collection. Um, and so most of the designer ones are going to be the popular ones that are mass pleasing that I love. Um, that's okay. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there and until I can get my nose on it, like this is what I'm enjoying. Um, I think everybody has been tech because i've seen this video around so much like i don't even know who has not been tagged at this point um <laughs> i even asked erica of um winter michelle's if she had been tagged and i think she just started her channel maybe a week or two ago and she's already been tagged so um i think annalicia mm um she just started her channel about a week ago or recently restarted it like me um beauty lovers but we love fragrance a little bit more right now um so yeah hey Annalicia you're tagged um yeah that's all I could think of but if you haven't done it please do it because I love to hear people's lists I love to hear about what's in their collection I love for us to appreciate what's in our collection and not worrying about the next thing <sighs> yeah all right guys bye